good day to all of you i expect that all of you remember all that was taught to you in the previous class today you will learn something new but before we do that let us revise what you have learned can you tell why we use the toolbar option toolbar is a very important part of impress and you can make use of it as a shortcut way of doing many things in impress with the help of the toolbar you can hide or show the various tools can you tell what happens with page number with the help of the page number option you can insert page numbers on your slide can you tell how we hide the grid from our impress file in order to hide the grid we first click on the view menu and then select the grid option and click on the grid display which will hide the grid can you tell why we use the hyperlink by using hyperlink you can give a link for any file on your impress file and by opening this link you can work on these files how will you insert a picture in the impress file to insert a picture you first need to click on the insert option and then select the picture option from there you can then select a picture of your choice and insert it now all of you switch on your computers and open the impress file using the method taught to you let us now begin today's class have you been able to open your file let us now see what all we will learn in today's class in today's class you will learn about the format menu and you will then practice using hyperlink first go ahead and type out the given paragraph in a slide let us now learn about the character sub menu can you tell why we use the character sub menu in the previous class all of you had made use of the formatting toolbar to format your text or paragraph character sub menu is an option with the help of which you can use all the formatting options let us watch the video and learn about the font option of the character sub menu with the help of this video let us see how we can use the font option of the character sub menu so to make changes of the font we need to take a pointer to the format menu of the menu bar click there and then click on the character option as soon as you click here a box opens which has all the options for character choose the font tab or click on the font option so that you can see the options available for font here in the first option is the types of fonts there are type different types of writings available when you click you can see in the preview how your characters will look like so you can select one of these similarly from the typeface you can select bold and click on okay now when we clicked okay you see nothing has changed in our text to make the changes we first need to select the text and this way we select the line bring our pointer back to format click on character and then now choose the font type that you want so you can see the font type when you click there you can see it changing in the preview window so select the one which you like and then click on okay and you will see that that font style or the writing style of the selected line has got changed now 
So let's select the second line and see what other changes we can make. Again, take the pointer to format, click on character option, and now let's change the type phase of this line. So we can have base, bold, italic, or both bold and italic. So you can see in the preview what it will look like. Let us select bold italic both and click on OK. You will see that your the next line that you had selected becomes darker and thicker or bold and it is also in italics. Let us now select the next line. As is being shown in the video, we select the next line and then again take our pointer to the format. Mino of the Mino bar, click on it with the left button and then click on character option. This time, let's change the size. You can see there are various sizes of the characters available of your text. So you can select, let's say 24 and then click on OK and you will see that this particular size gets applied to your line. So this is how you can make changes on the font in your text. You will now learn about the font effect option. Font effect is also a part of the character submenu. You will see many options in font effect like font color, outline, shadow, overlining, strike through, underline, etc. Can you tell what happens with font color? Using font color, you can change the color of your text or paragraph. Now, all of you select one line and change the font color. If you face a problem, then watch the video and learn from it. Let us watch this video and learn how we will change the color of the font by using font effects. To change the color of the font, we first need to select the line or the text on which we need to change the color. So you can use the keyboard or the mouse to select the line as is being shown in the video. Once you have selected the line like this, then take your pointer to the Mino bar and click on the format option, format Mino. Then choose the character option and a box opens. In this, you have to look for the font effects option because in the font option, you do not have the color option. So you should click on the font effects tab or the font effects option. The first option here is font color. So if you click on the drop down button and scroll up or down, you can see so many colors are available. You have a wide available choice. Select the one, select the color that you like, click on that color and you can see that in your preview window also here. Click on OK and you will see that the line that you had selected on the slide changes to that color. This is how you will change the font color. Now you will learn about outline and shadow. Can you tell why we use outline? When we use outline, then each character of our text only appears in outline and there is no solid fill color inside the characters. Let us now watch the video and see what happens with outline. Let us now learn how we use the outline option. So, in whichever line or text we want to use the outline option, we first need to select that. So, as is being shown in the video, we select the line where we want to apply the outline option. With the outline option, only the outline of the characters will be shown and no solid color will be there. 
take the pointer to format and select the character option. When you select the character option, a box opens and in this you have to go to the font effects option or the click on the font effects tab. And here you find the outline option, click on outline and in the preview you can see that the outline option gets applied to the text. Click on OK and you will notice that on the line that you had selected, all the characters are appearing in outline. Can you tell what happens with shadow? With the use of shadow, your text gets a shadow. Let us see this video and understand what happens with shadow. Let us now see how we will apply shadow to our selected text. So, to apply the shadow, we first need to select the line or the text that we want to apply the shadow to. So, as is being shown in the video, we have selected the line. Now, bring your pointer to the menu bar and click on format menu or the format option and click on the character sub menu. As soon as you click on the character sub menu, the box opens which has, you can click on font effects tab and within this is the shadow option. If you tick on it or if you select it, the shadow gets applied on your text. Click on OK and you will see that a shadow has been applied to the text that you had selected. This is how you will use the shadow effect. Let us now learn about overlining, strike through and underlining. Can you tell what happens with overlining? With overlining, you can get a line on top of your text or paragraph. There are many types of overlining. And while using overline, you can even change the color of the overline. Let us now watch the video and learn more about overlining. Let us now see how we can apply overlining on the text of our choice. So, to apply overline, we first need to select the line or the text as is being shown in the video. We select the line, then we take the pointer to the format option of the menu bar, left click on it. And then from the box which opens, select the character option. As soon as you click on the character option, a box opens. Make sure that you are either already in the font effects option area or you click on the font effects or font effects tab. Here you see the overlining option. It shows without and there is no overline color being highlighted. When you click on the drop down box here, you can select one of the line types, single, double, dotted, dotted bold, any of these type of lines which you like, you can select and click on that, like we click on double and you see in the preview, we, we see that applied to the text. Also the overline color box, becomes available. When you click on the drop down button here, you see many colors. Select the one which you like and you can see that applied on the preview window. Then let's click on OK and you will see that the line that you had selected has been, there is an overline on top of that selected line. Let us now learn about strike through. Do you know why we use strike through? By using strike through, you can get a line on top of your text right through the center of the text. Let us watch the video and see how we use strike through. With the help of this video, let us now see how to apply strike through on the selected text. Strike through means there will be a line 
in the center of your text. So to apply strike through, first select the line, then take your pointer to the format option of the menu bar, left click on that, and then click on the character option. As soon as you click on the character option, a box opens. You have to ensure that you select the font effects option or click on the font effects tab. Right now in the video, you can see it is already pre-selected. In this, look for strike through option, which is on the right side in the center. And then when you click on the drop down button, you see many options available for strike through. Single line, double line, bold. So we select the one which we like and click on OK. And you will see that the selected line has been has had a strike through effect on it or it is struck through in the center. Let us now learn about underline. Can you tell why we use underline? As you know, with underline, we can get a line below our text or paragraph. If you want to highlight a paragraph, you can do so by underlining it. With this option, you can also use many different types of lines and you can change the color of the underline also. Let us watch the video and learn more about underlining. With the help of this video, let us now see how we can underline selected text. So to be able to underline the text, first we need to select the line or the text that we want to underline. As is being shown in the video, we first select this text and then we will take our pointer to the format option of the menu bar and left click with the mouse or the touchpad to select that option. Click on the character option because we are changing character styles. So now in this box, make sure that the font effects is selected. Otherwise, click on the font effects tab and you can see the underlining option is at the bottom. Right now, the underlying color is not selected. When we select the underlining effect, the underlining color will also be affected. So these are different types, dotted, single, double line. To underline your text, you can choose the one which you like and you can see that in the preview here. Now the color is also available. When you click on the drop down box, you can select any color of your choice. So you can see in the preview also and when you click on OK, you will see that the underline has been applied to the line that you had selected and it is also of the same color that you had chosen. Let us now learn about default formatting. Can you tell what happens with default formatting? Default formatting is an option with which you can remove any formatting that has been done on a line or paragraph and bring it back to its original form. Let us watch the video and see how default formatting is used. In this video, we are going to learn what happens with default formatting. So, with default formatting, you can remove all the formatting done on your text. In this slide, you see a lot of formatting has been done on the lines already. So, now select all the lines where you want to apply default formatting. Take your pointer to the format option of the menu bar. Click on the format menu. And then click on the first option which is for default formatting. You can also use Ctrl plus M which is the shortcut command for this. As soon as you click here, your lines become as they were originally without any formatting being done on them as, as is shown in the video. This is how you use default formatting. We will now learn about some of the options of the paragraph. Can you tell 
why we use the paragraph sub menu option the paragraph sub menu helps you set the margins of your paragraph for example using this you can define how much space you want to leave before typing your text or after typing the text similarly there are other such options also next you will learn about the paragraph sub menu options for indent and spacing can you tell why we use indent and spacing as we can see from the name by using indent and spacing we can give spaces in our line or paragraph we will now watch the video and see how we use indent and spacing with the help of this video let us now learn how we use the indent and spacing options so to use indent and spacing we first select the paragraph where we want to apply the indent and spacing take our pointer to the format option of the menu bar and then click on the paragraph option once you click on the paragraph option a box opens and in this box select the indents and spacing option or click on the tab for indent and spacing in the indent options you can see before text after text and in before text you can either use the up arrow or the down arrow so we have used the up arrow increased it and and then click on ok so you will see that before the paragraph there is space has been applied to our paragraph so the pa lines of the paragraph start a little away from paragraph now once again go to format select paragraph and let's now apply space after text so we increase from the up arrow button the space after the text and then click on we can also see whether we want to apply it only to the first line so if we apply it only to the first line increase the space there and say okay so you can see that the space has been applied to the first line and the other lines are as they were so this is how you can apply indent on your paragraph next let us select this paragraph once again as is being shown in the video so in the when go to the format click on paragraph and now come to spacing so you can see there are two options above paragraph and below paragraph so if you click on the up arrow above paragraph area you can apply the spacing above the paragraph or before the paragraph begins and if you apply spacing uh, below the paragraph then the space will appear after the text of the paragraph so we have applied on both and then we click there is also a line spacing option so you can select whether you want to leave spaces more space between the lines so you can have single line or 1.5 line or double line so when when you select you can see in the preview window also that the spaces between the lines has increased click on okay and whatever you have just selected gets applied so you can see you can see there is more space between the lines of the paragraph and there is space above the paragraph and below the paragraph now we have just broken this into two paragraphs and we have selected the text take a pointer to format go to paragraph and then apply above paragraph and below paragraph we are applying spaces click on okay and you will see that in both our paragraphs above the paragraph and below the paragraph space has been applied so this is how you can use the indent and spacing option next 
you will learn about the alignment option of the paragraph submenu. Can you tell why we use the alignment option? We use the alignment option to center left, right or justify align our text. Let us watch the video and learn how we use the alignment option. With the help of this video, let us now learn about how we apply the alignment on our text. So, let's first make these lines in separate paragraphs by pressing enter here and then let's select the first line. After selecting the first line, take your pointer to the format option in the Mino bar, click on it and then click on the paragraph option. As soon as you click on the paragraph option, the box for this option opens. Click on the alignment tab or click on the alignment option because now we have to do the alignment of our text. You see options available. Left is already pre-selected. Right, center, justified are the other options available. Since we want to right align our first line, we click on right align. You can see in the preview box also that the lines are getting right aligned. Click on OK and you can see that the line that you had selected is now aligned towards the right side. So this is, this has got right aligned. Now let's select the next line. As is being shown in the video, we select the next line. Take a pointer to the format option in the menu bar. Click there. Click again on the paragraph option. Once again, we bring up the box for paragraph options and uh, we are in alignment. So this time, let's click on center. And you see in the preview also that the lines are getting center aligned. Click on OK. And the line that you had selected has been aligned to the center. So you can see that this line is right in the center of the slide. Let's now select the next line. These lines are already left aligned. Okay. So now we want to see how what happens when we do justify alignment. So let's select all the lines as is being shown in the video. Then we take a pointer to the format option, click on it and select the paragraph option from here. Click on the paragraph option. The box opens and now we select the justified alignment option, the last option. So click on that and you will see even in the preview that the lines get justify aligned, which means from the left and the right, they are properly aligned. So you can see all the lines, click on OK and you will see in your slide, all the lines have got justify aligned. Or from the left and the right, they are similarly aligned and all the lines look similar. Next, let us learn about bullets and numbering. Can you tell why we use bullets and numbering? If you want to make a list and put different types of symbols in front of the lines, then you could use bullets. With the bullets option, you can put bullets in front of each line. If you want to have numbers in front of the lines, then you will use the numbering option. Let us now watch the video and understand the use of bullets and numbering. With this video, we will now understand how we can apply bullets and numbering on our text. So to apply the bullets and numbers, first ensure that your cursor is on the line where you want to apply the bullets. Then take your pointer to the format option in the menu bar, left click on that and from the options available, click on the bullets and numbering option. A box opens and in this box, since we have to apply bullets, click on the bullets option or the bullets tab. You see a number of styles of bullets are available. So whichever you like, select that. 
by clicking on it as is being shown in the video and then click on OK. So you will see that the same bullet that you selected gets applied on the first line. Now if you bring your cursor to the end of the line and press enter, the next line will also have the same bullet. If you want to remove this bullet, either use backspace or press enter once again. Now let's select the, keep our cursor on the second line because we want to apply numbering on this. Bring your pointer to format and select the bullets and numbering option. Now from this box, click on the numbering type option or numbering type tab and you will see a number of numbering styles available to you. Choose the one that you like and click on that and then click on OK. So that kind of number will get applied to the beginning of your line. If you want, bring the cursor to the end of this line, press enter and a similar numbering will appear in the next line. To remove this, just press backspace or press enter once again. Next, let's select the next, bring the cursor to the beginning of the next line. Take it to, take the pointer to format option. Click again on bullets and numbering. And from the box that opens, now we have to apply graphics. So select the graphics option or click on the graphics tab. There are a number of styles available. You can scroll up and down also. Select the one which you like, click on that and then click on OK. And you will see that this kind of graphics that you selected gets applied to this line. If you go to the end of the line and press enter, the next line will also have the same graphics. Again, to remove this, you can just press backspace or enter and it will get removed. As is being shown to you in the video. Next, if you want to remove these graphics and bullets and number, just bring the cursor to the beginning of the line as is being shown and press backspace and that graphics gets hidden or is taken away. On the second line again, we click there in the beginning of the line and press backspace and the number goes away. First line, beginning of the line, bring the cursor there, press backspace and the number, the bullet also goes away. This is how you use bullets and numbering and graphics. You will now learn about the page sub menu of the format menu. The first option of the page sub menu is the page option. Look at the picture being shown to you carefully. These are the options of the page sub menu. You will now learn about the paper format. With paper format, you can know about the type of the paper. Can you tell why we use the orientation option? With the use of the orientation option, you can change your page's property, meaning you can change the way it appears, either in height or width. Orientation is of two types, portrait and landscape. Currently, your slide is in landscape mode. So the width of your slide is more than the height. If you change it to portrait mode, then the height will become more than the width. Let us learn by watching the video. With the help of this video, let us understand the use of paper format on our slide. So, to be able to vary the paper format and the page orientation, click on the format option in the menu bar and then choose the page option. When you click on the page option, a box opens. You should click on the page option or the page tab. And here you can see the paper format is given. And there are width and height variations here. So if you click on the drop down button, a number of formats are available. So let's say if we choose A4 and click on A4 then our slide will be in A4 format. It's a type of paper format. 
So the height and the width are defined here. Now, there, the orientation of the page can be in portrait or in landscape. Currently, it's in landscape. Let's click on OK. And you see that the page A4 format has been selected for our slide, as is being shown in the video. Next, once again, let's go to the format option in the menu bar. Click on the page option. Come back to the box for the page setup. Click on the format option. Scroll down and you can see many other formats are available. Let's click on screen. So the slide is defined as per the screen. Now you can change the orientation and see the effect. We click on portrait. You see that the height increases and the width is lesser. So this is the portrait option. If you click on landscape, you will see that the width increases and the height is less. So this is the difference between portrait and landscape. We are looking at the preview here. Once again, let's click on portrait, select that and click on OK. So you see that your page has become in portrait format. The height is more, the width is less. If we want to change this back, we will again take our pointer to format. Click there, click on the page option. And from the box that opens, in the orientation, select landscape and then click on OK. So your page now the format will appear in orient in the this orientation which we have selected now once again take the pointer to format option go to page option and keeping the landscape orientation now let's look at the what happens with margins with the option which is given here you can increase the left margin the right top or bottom when we increase these margins, what it means is how much gap we want to leave for the slide or for the text from the margins, from the left margin, from the right margin, as is being shown in the video. Now we are changing the margin for the top. And you can see the change is also reflected in the preview window. So now for the bottom again we increase the margin and next we click on OK and you see that the margins have been applied to our slide. So the slide, the text basically begins a little distance from each of the margins that we have selected. So this is how you can change the orientation and the paper format. Now you will use the background option. Can you tell what happens with the background option? With the page background, you can change the background or color of the page behind the text. If you like, you can even put an image as the page background. Let us now watch the video and learn how we change the background of the page. Let us now see how we will apply different page backgrounds on our slides. To apply the background, take your pointer to format menu, click on it and then click on the page option. And from the box which opens, now select the background tab. Click on the background option and you see fill and it's, it says none right now. But if you click on the drop down window, button here, click on it and you will see there are options available to fill it with color, gradient, hatching or bitmap. If we select color, another box opens which has many colors available. You can scroll up and down and then select the color of your choice. Click on OK and a small box opens which asks you whether you want to apply this to all the pages, to all the slides. If you say yes, it gets applied on all the slides. If you say no, it gets applied only on this slide. 
So let's say yes here. Click on yes and you will see that the background of the slide has changed to the color that of your choice. If you want to change it again, go to format, take the pointer there, click there, click on page and then you can change the color or you can click on this drop down box and select let's say the gradients. So there are many gradients available. You can select the one which you like and you can see the preview here. So you can see which one you like. For instance, if we want gradient 3 to be applied, we'll select that and then click on OK. Again, we can say yes to all pages and click on yes and that color will get applied to our background. So this is how you can apply background to all your slides. Next, you will learn about the change case option of the format menu. By using change case, you can change the case of the text you have written into capitals or lower case and can also use the sentence case. Let us now learn about lower case. Can you tell why we use lower case? By using lower case, you can change all the characters of your line or paragraph to small letters. Let's watch the video and see how we use the lower case. Let us now see how we can apply the change case and use the lower case option. To apply the lower case, first we need to select the line where we want to apply lower case. So as is being shown in the video, select that line. Then take your pointer to the format option. Click on that with the left button and click take your pointer to change case. You will see options available for sentence case, lower case, upper case, capitalize every word and toggle case. So since we want lower case, we click on lower case and you will see that on your slide in the line that you had selected all the text letters become small. So this is how you will use lower case. Let us now learn about the sentence case. Can you tell what is sentence case? Sentence case has the first letter of each line in capitals and the sentence case is pre-selected on the page. Watch the video and practice the use of the sentence case. We now practice applying the sentence case. So to apply the sentence case, let's select the first sentence. After selecting it, take the pointer to the format option of the Mino bar, left click on that and from the choices available, bring your pointer to change case. Again, a box opens with other choices in the change case and now we select sentence case and click on that. As soon as we click on sentence case, you will notice that the sentence that you had selected or the line you had selected changes into sentence case. The first letter of the first word becomes capital. Everything else is in small. This is how you will apply sentence case. Next is the option of uppercase. Can you tell what happens with the uppercase? With uppercase, you can change all the letters of your line or paragraph to capitals. Let us watch the video and see how we use uppercase. We will now see the use of uppercase. So to apply uppercase, again, Select the line where you want to apply the uppercase as is being shown in the video. Once it has been selected, take your pointer to the format option of the Mino bar and click on it with the left button. From the choices which are available, bring your pointer to change case option. And since we now want to apply uppercase, we select or click on the uppercase option. As is being shown in the video, as soon as we click on the uppercase option, 
you will see on the selected line all the characters have become capital letters. So, this is the use of uppercase. Next is the option to capitalize every word. Can you tell why we use the option of capitalize every word? With capitalize every word, you can change the first letter of every word of your line or paragraph into capitals. Watch the video to learn the use of capitalize every word. Let us now see how this next option of capitalize every word is used. So, for this, let us first select a line on which we want to apply this option. As is being shown in the video, we have selected a line. Now, take your pointer to the format menu of the menu bar and left click on that. From the box which opens, select, take your pointer to change case option and then click on capitalize every word to choose that. As soon as you click on it, you will notice that the first letter of every word of the selected sentence becomes capital. This is how you use capitalize every word. Next is the option of toggle case. Can you tell why we use toggle case? Toggle case changes the small letters to capitals and the capital letters to small in your line or paragraph. Watch the video to see how toggle case is used. Let us now see how we apply the toggle case to the selected text. For this, let us select the last two lines of this paragraph on the slide. As is being shown in the video, we select the lines and then take our pointer to the format option of the menu bar. Left click with the mouse or the touchpad there and from the box that opens, bring your pointer to change case and you will see the options available. Click on the toggle case. With toggle case, what happens is any letters which are in small become capital and the capital letters become small letters. As you can see, the first letter which was capital has become small. Now, let us just apply the toggle case once again to the last line. So, let us select that last line, go back to format, come to change case and apply toggle case again. So, what will happen? You will see the line becomes as it was earlier. Once again, go to format, go to change case and apply toggle case again. So, this is how you will use toggle case on selected text. The next option of the format menu is of slide design. Can you tell why we use slide design? With slide design, you can change the design of your slide into many different designs. Watch the video to learn how you can change the slide design. Let us watch this video to learn how we can change our slide design. So, to change, let us first bring a new slide by clicking here with the right in the slide pane and then clicking on new slide. So, we get a new slide. Let us go to layout and click on blank layout so that we have a blank slide. So, now we have a blank slide. Next, take your pointer to the format option in the menu bar, left click on it and then look for slide design and click on that. When you click on that, a box opens and you are seeing the design which is already applied on your slide. If you look below, there are two options, exchange background page or delete unused backgrounds. So, let us click on load and a box opens where it says categories, my templates, presentation backgrounds and presentations. So, let us click on presentation backgrounds and 
the it is chosen dark blue so let's click on ok and you will see that this dark blue slide becomes available to us if we click on ok now we are new slide that we had taken changes to this particular slide design next in the slide layout let's click on master pages and you will see the master pages which are already used in the presentation these two on the top and others available down here so if you click on these the design that you click on will become available for use. So if we click here, we see that this design becomes available for use. It gets applied to all our slides in the presentation. So if we click on slide one, and if we want it only on one slide, then bring the pointer to slide layout and right click on it. And you have options of apply to all slides or apply to selected slides. Let's click on apply to selected slide. So only on this slide, this design will get applied. So this is how we can change the slide design. Next option is of layout. As you know, with layout, you can change the layout of your slide. With the help of the video, see how you can change the layout of the slide. With the help of this video, let us see how we can change the slide layout. So to change the slide layout, take your pointer to format option, click there and then click on the slide layout option. As soon as you click on slide layout, you will find on the right side, your slide layout pane is available once again. So there are different layouts available. So you can choose the one. If you want to click on blank, you will get the blank layout for the slide. If you want to choose the title layout, title and content layout, or you want to choose title and two contents, you will have this kind of a slide available as seen in the video. You will also notice that if you click on the text area, your text properties or uh, text toolbar uh, is available on the right side of the slide. If you click on the side of the slide, it will again the slide layout will be available to you and you can change to any layout of your choice. This is how you will use slide layout. Since today's class will end here, all of you save your impress file at a different place and properly shut down your computers. In today's class, you learned about some of the options of the format menu like the font, font effect in the character sub menu, page, default formatting, change case, slide design and about slide layout. Thank you.